Can you see it? We're live. I'd, I'd like to call the Public Works Subcommittee to order February 8th, a couple minutes after six. It's a virtual meeting. We'll do roll call. Ken Demers. Jeff Demers. Rachel Ryan. Here. Uh, Robert Decina. Present. Robert Redlick. Present. All present accounted for. Awesome. Item three on our item three on our agenda are the minutes from the January eleventh uh, regular meeting. Can't remember. Do we need do we need a motion on this? I just have to mention that uh, I'm not on the roll call for those minutes. You are not on the roll call for those minutes. Jeff, you were in that meeting, weren't you? Yes, I was. Okay, so so um, we will make a note of that and and get it corrected. Is there any other discussion? Any changes? Hearing none, can I have a motion? I make a motion to approve the minutes from the virtual regular meeting on Monday, January 11th. Do I have a second? I'll I will second, second that. that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks, guys. <clears throat> Item four is public participation. Is there anybody out there? Mr. Chairman, I see zero attendees this time. All right, we'll move on. Item five, correspondence. There's a um, slew of them. Does... Um, Roy, or anybody have any concerns or questions on anything? No, I just, um, the one about Miro, we're going to be talking under the business item and item G, I want to bring your attention to request for PA and hazard mitigation grants for approval. Um, there's a possibility we may be putting together a grant application for that. Okay. Okay. So there. Last, last but not least, uh, memo under K through the police commission. Um, it came in kind of late, um, but we'll be talking about under 7B. Um, but that's an exciting project. Nothing else of correspondence. Okay, anybody else? All right, Roy, could you say, which one did you say was the exciting project? Uh, it's under K under correspondence is the memo and under new business 7B. Oh. It's a uh, rectangular rapid flashing beacons proposed by the state of Connecticut on local roads at no cost to the town. Okay. So we'll go to six to old business. Or you want to give us a quick update? Uh, yeah, under old business, engineering status, engineering's working on the, uh, the project plans. There's a couple out the bid and there's a couple more coming. Uh, there's one more subdivision gonna be coming down on Munson Road. Under lot zip, there's nothing new. Ash tree removal is nothing new. Edgewood Avenue, Watertown Stability. We need to talk about that on our budget. Uh, Steelbrook Greenway, Nogany River Greenway, nothing new. Staffing all positions filled and the tank replacement at the fire department headquarters is uh, out the bid. Highway, as you can imagine, they're all out there plowing or cleaning. Uh, at this point, all equipment is operational. All uh, positions are filled. 
Uh, we're not doing a whole lot besides uh, plowing the last week or so. For the next week, it should be very, very busy. Under solid waste division status, we're, uh, the new things is we have the three household hazardous waste scheduled as per the memo, and we're still working on closing the landfill. Uh, public works bond, uh, as discussed a long time ago, we're finalizing the plans for the Falls Avenue culvert replacement of the 2013-2019. A big part of that is the paving program that we're gonna be talking about here shortly. Um, and we have some other projects like Wilson Street Bridge uh, is proceeding very nicely, should be going out the bid. I did contact the Connecticut DOT local bridge program and they tell me that the 50% state share is still in place and we're still good for that. Uh, snow removal division status, you have a copy of the budget to date. Uh, nothing else on the road business. Through the chair, if I may. Sure. So, Roy, under the for old business, it came back um, about the ordinance about roof drains and other discharges. And I see that th it's in our packet, but I don't see it on the, um, the agenda here. Uh, it wasn't put on the agenda um, because when I put together the agenda, the town council, I put together the agenda before the town council chamber tabled uh, the ordinance. You know, we can talk about it or add it to the agenda if you so choose by a 50% vote. Yes, yeah, so um, if I may through the chair again. Um, so the part that bothered me about this. Um, Excuse me. You Go have ahead. to make a motion to add it to the agenda, Rob. Okay. Um, I'll make that motion. I'll second. I second. Who seconded? I did, Rachel. Vote. Ask, ask if everybody's in favor. Is, is everybody in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Okay. So, um, so now to get back to this is that um, when I was reading this is it starts off, it says roof drains and other discharges. So um, is groundwater running off of somebody's property onto a street um, is that considered inside this? Because that's the way that I'm reading it. Uh, it could very well be if the groundwater is being discharged to a groundwater collection pipe or a um, like a French drain or a trench. So the, the point, as I understand, well, the point I was trying, um, if there's a point source discharge onto the road, uh, we were looking for some legislative authority to control it. If it's a general uh, groundwater seepage out of a bank or sheet water flowing coming off the property, uh, really not much you can do about that. Or at least hold the homeowner responsible for. Well, I guess that's where, that's what bothers me here because it just says other discharges and it doesn't say that. So is the next group of people going to come in here and look at that differently than what you're looking at it as? Not if the ordinance is crafted the way you want it to be. Okay, I just, and the reason why I ask is because I know when they reconstructed my road of Ledgewood Road, uh, when they narrowed it and put curbs in, they redirected groundwater through my yard now and out my driveway that creates a, a massive ice jam on Ledgewood Road every year since they redesigned the road. Yeah, well, the way the ordinance process has got to go, if it gets referred to the, the committee, is they come up with draft language, and then there's got to be a public hearing. There's got to be input, and the language has got to be crafted the way uh, everybody wants it to be, and then it goes out for public approval. Uh, so your concerns would or should be addressed during the public hearing process if it, do, if it does make it that far. 
Okay. I just want to make sure that I'm not the only, I know that I'm not the only one that this has happened to in town. So um, I just wanted to make sure that other people were protected from something like this also. Yeah, the intent is to try to pick up or have the ability to pick up or ma mandate that point source discharges, pipes, foundation drawings, et cetera, um, that we have the ability to order them to be connected into the public system. Otherwise, with no statutory authority, um, people could dump it on the road, um, causing safety issues, like you said, and the town has to go in and make the connection um, if it's a big enough problem. Um, for the most part, what we do is we do a roadway reconstruction. Nowadays, similar to what we're doing on a paving project, uh, we automatically pick up any and all drains uh, that we encounter during the construction project and connect them in. Okay. Ken, I have a question. Sure. Roy, are, are you saying you're, you're looking at the streets where private residences are as well as businesses? Yes. It sounds like a much broader scope to me than we've ever discussed before. Shouldn't we have a handle on, I mean, how many streets are impacted or how many, what areas are impacted or what people are impacted before we take it to a hearing? I mean, we, we need to be able to tell people in detail whether they're affected or not. Well, right now, uh, we don't have any proposed ordinance language right now we have no real framework for it. Um, so I would anticipate as part of developing it um, in the ordinance subcommittee or however we do, uh, we come up with uh, what exactly the parameters we want to see how it's impact or, or what is going to be impact uh, before it does go out the public hearing. I mean, this whole thing is new, it's gotta be vetted. To me, you're going backwards. Can't go, can't draw up an ordinance if you don't know what you want it to govern. And if you want it to govern every single street in town, then that's a whole different scope than just businesses. If you're talking about residence runoff, it's, it's a much bigger scope. Well, a lot of the problems are coming from residences, particularly if you're, um, you know, if they're making modifications to their property at this point, um, everybody has the ability to stop uh, the roof leaders at their uh, property line and they can discharge it onto the road even if there's a catch basin right in front of them. We have no authority to direct them into the catch basin. Got and it. that's been the source okay. of the problem. Okay. Through the chair. Yes. Roy, you mentioned in a previous meeting that, this, that many other towns have these ordinances, is that correct? Right. This, what, if you take a look in the research, um, the state allows uh, this type of ordinance specifically. So could we look at some other ordinances that are already written? Yeah, absolutely. And, yeah, that would seem to make sense to me. I, I, I had a question. This happened to me recently. Um, I, I sort of hate to admit this, but I was in the Taco Bell drive through I was picking up food for my son only. <laughs> and um, I hit this huge patch of ice and I literally lost control of my car as I was coming around the building. Like it slid, like it was really weird. And I almost hit the side of the building. And I talked to the, um, the young guy at the drive-thru and asked him about it. And we had just talked about this the night before in our last meeting. And I said, oh my gosh, this is an issue we're talking about. And as you all know, you know, there's that huge retaining wall and the hill. And so he said it's runoff from the house that's right up above there. And they've talked to them and they haven't done anything about it. So I don't know exactly, obviously the details and if what we're talking about would apply to that situation, but- um, no, no, it would not. It would not? No, the, the intent of this, by ordinance, we can control what comes onto the public right away, but we cannot control what goes on between adjacent property owners. Oh, that uh, makes we, sense. Get, we get this question and issue a lot. Mm. 
Okay. Uh, through the chair, I, I have two questions, one regarding this, and, and I'll come back to the other question once we're off of this. Um, the first question is, in, in terms of homeowners, um, if there's certain things that they have to do uh, to be compliant with, with an ordinance like this, um, is the entire cost of that those changes on them to do, or is there um, some type of hybrid funding for it, you know, from the, either from the... Uh, the town or from a state agency or something like that that we're aware of uh, because for some people that they have to redirect water away from their property to the street because of flooding concerns um, it might be a situation where uh, they have to put it into the street that's where they you know they typically drain it. my old house was similar to that um, and otherwise they get pooling and they can get some kind of uh, some kind of uh, leakage into the house or, or what have you is there anything that we that is out there um, or what other towns may do in that type of situation that's available for the homeowners or for businesses for that matter? Yeah, I'm not aware of any at this point. Um, as you said, there's a lot of situations where uh, due to the topography that the homeowner has got no choice except to direct it toward uh, the street for one reason or another. You know, the intent is not to require infiltrators all over the place. There's a lot of places in town, as you know, that don't have any storm drain system whatsoever there. Um, they would, by default, they'd be excluded from this because there's nothing to tie it into. Um, I don't see a lot of cases where it's um, really going to be implemented the intent was if a homeowner or a property owner or a business owner is creating a public nuisance and there is the ability to tie it into um, a storm water collection system reasonably, uh, you know, we would like to have that tool in our property. Uh, some of uh, tool, uh, tool in our toolbox, as you say. Um, for, there's another, for instance, when you have a property owner that's discharging water onto the road, but the stormwater system is on the other side of the street. Uh, we've never made them dig up the street and tie it in across the street, for instance. Uh, you know, we try to make it reasonable and we try to make it uh, in the interest of public safety. One of the reasons it came up this year is because we had such a wet fall and a wet early spring. Uh, we had a lot of... Um, water coming in places that we've never had before. Uh, so that groundwater, really not much to do about it because by common law, uh, if water flows downhill and you're not directing it onto somebody else by means of a pipe or a swell or whatever, uh, you have a God given right to discharge your sheet flow downhill. And that's not the intent of the ordinance is to pick it up. With the chair. Through the chair, question. Uh, Roy, sir, would this be applicable, this ordinance to existing buildings, homes, whatnot within the fire district or new homes constructed in the fire district where the runoff would flow into storm drains from the fire district as opposed to from the town of Watertown? The fire district doesn't have any storm drains. They're all town. Thank you. And the town also has all the roads. The only thing the fire district has is the water mains, the sewer mains, um, and they no longer do the street lights or the, uh, the zoning. Uh, so they're strictly a uh, water and a sewer utility. The storm sewer utility uh, throughout the town is a town system. Thank you, Roy. You answered my question. Through the chair. Sure, Rachel. Right. Uh, are we talking about, um, obviously, when ice builds up, that, that I'm assuming is where it can be dangerous. I, I'm thinking about a couple places, I think on Echo Lake Road, where there's there tends to be a lot of ice in the winter. Um, but is it also a problem with just standing water on roads and posing a danger? Or are you, are you really mostly only concerned about when it ices up in the winter? I'm mostly concerned about icing in the winter. If there's standing water in the road, that would not be covered by this particular ordinance. The only thing to be covered by this ordinance is when 
a particular property is directing water directly onto the road and there is uh, causing a problem. Uh, and they do have the uh, capacity or there is the capacity to tie it into a storm drain system. One of the other benefits from this ordinance is that um, if we have the authority to direct it into it, that would by extension, I believe will also give us the authority uh, to make the connection, um, rather have the town forces make the connection, uh, which could be at no expense or, or split the cost with the town if there is a public benefit for doing so, i.e. safety. Hmm. And can I ask another question? If um, if there were, say, to be an accident because somebody hit some ice that was on the road due to this problem, um, could the driver of the car sue the town, or would they would they sue the homeowner, or who would be responsible or liable for that? Right now, the town is responsible, and yes, the driver, in my experience, would always sue the town because the town is the deep pocket. Uh, the way we handle it right now is if somebody is causing a safety issue or nuisance on the roadway for this regard, I send them a letter and I try to guilt them into doing something about it, but I have no authority to make them do something about it. I have no authority to uh, tell the PD that they're creating a nuisance because there's nothing or the ordinance wise to back it up. Okay. Yeah, you may or may not be aware um, all of the ordinances in town, even the stormwater leaf collection, that sort of thing, uh, the enforcement is always on the police department. Um, so statutorily, we need to give um, the town and or the cops the ability uh, to enforce this issue if we so choose to move down this path. You know, my intent was if you guys uh, and ladies um, were interested in pursuing this, uh, then, you know, certainly we go out, we do the research, we can do develop a model or there are model ordinances out there. Um, you know, we can craft it the way Watertown wants it. Um, and then and this is all part of the ordinance development through that uh, particular process. Uh, but the intent was if the subcommittee or the town council are not interested in pursuing it, then it's a dead issue. If you're interested in pursuing it, then we'll figure out how to do it. Ken, yeah. if I might, if I might, I, I might recommend that maybe we uh, consider um, putting to a vote, uh, taking the next step, at least to find out uh, this information so that we can make a recommendation to the town council from here, um, which would include, as Rachel suggested, getting information from other municipalities that do similar, have similar ordinances. Mm -hmm. Sure, sure, I agree, Jeff. I, I think we should do some research before we put it to a vote, though. No, I think he's only saying a vote to forward it to the council. Now, my suggestion is, I think, just to, to take the next step, I think a vote to say, Roy, look into this, find us information, now just to make it official that we're looking into it and, and have a report for the next meeting. Do we just... That require us to take a vote. I mean, I I could say for myself that I'm in favor of looking into it. Through the chair. Yes, sir. I'm in agreement with you and what you just said, along with what Jeffrey just said. However, regarding enforcement, it falls upon the police department, maybe, but in dealing with ordinances in the past that weren't within the realm of public nuisances. Uh, criminal enforcement, usually in other municipalities, they have an enforcement officer, a enforcement officer for ordinances. The police deal within the realm of violations that are forwarded to the court. There's always a penal sanction involved, and it's usually not the fine given on an ordinance, which I believe that the limit is $100 for violation of an ordinance. And on some ordinances we did have on the books, I think that we're going to revise them. It went from a maximum of $100. We had some ordinance that $100 a day. How do you keep track? How do you keep forwarding that to the court? I just like to see what other municipalities do regarding the enforcement factor. Ken? Yeah, Mayor. 
what what you need to do is forward it to the council for submission to the ordinance committee. It would be their responsibility to do the research that Rachel is suggesting and to discuss how the ordinance is formulated and then to bring it to public hearing for discussion and whatever. Uh, the ordinance committee works with the town attorney to draft the language so that it's legal and can set penalty amounts and all of that. Um, that's not something you can do at your level uh, for public buildings. It's got to go to ordinance. So it would seem it should go back now after you've discussed it and want it looked into uh, much more um, in much more detail. Okay, that sounds good. Sounds good. So, so just make a motion to send it back and ask ordinance to do the necessary investigation to write it, to write the ordinance. Thank you, Mayor. Would, will somebody make a motion? I'll make a motion that we recommend that we send this issue back to the town council so they can send it to the ordinance subcommittee for further research and review. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Through the chair, I did have one more question regarding uh, the highway division report, if I may. Sure, Jeff. It's just a quick, small question on here, and this may have been discussed earlier um, at the previous meeting, but it has ash tree removal program. Uh, does that entail ash tree removal on public lands or is that general ash tree removal throughout the town? No, that's uh, the tree warden has only got authority uh, within the public right of way. Okay. Uh, so this is the street ash tree removal program. Uh, and there's generally speaking, uh, doesn't include any private property removals. Okay, thank you. I, I have one question, quick question for Roy before we move on to new business. Um, I guess it would fall under uh, snow removal division. Um, with another storm anticipated for Tuesday for tomorrow, and then I believe another one for Friday, um, someone asked me to question this morning about the sidewalks on Main Street. Um, in other words, you pull over to get out of your car at Fino and you get out of the passenger seat and you're, you're stepping on a big mound of snow, which is only going to get worse in the next week. Do we, is it public works responsibility for removing that snow or is it the business owner? Uh, technically, the business owner is responsible for removal from this uh, sidewalk by ordinance. The DOT is responsible for clearing the road. So you've got the DOT pushing the snow onto the sidewalk because it's right on the road. And then you've got the sidewalk owners pushing it back into the, uh, the road. So you've got that tension going on. Uh, at this point, the town does have the uh, uh, ability to go in there and clean it out if directed by the town manager. Um, we have done it in the past when the snow built up a little bit. The union contract allows us to call the guys in early for that specific task. Um, we have done in the past and uh, yeah, we can certainly do it again in the future. Um, right now, uh, it would be problematic because we're in the process of uh, uh, performing maintenance on the vehicles and make sure they are ready. We're hauling sand and salt in, getting it ready for that sort of thing. So. Uh, typically, we do that sort of activity after uh, a big snow, and we've gotten everything cleaned up and addressed, or a series of smaller ones. Uh, but again, the, the town manager does have the authority to order that, uh, even though it is the responsibility of the property owner. Okay, thank thank you, Roy. Has anybody else had have any? Uh, has that complaint come to anybody else in this group? Yes, I I've heard that complaint. In the past, Ken. Yeah, I have too. So, so, would, so we could approach um, the town attorney, I mean, the town uh, manager on this? 
I can talk to the town manager tomorrow. Uh, he's obviously going to talk to Roy to find out the availability. If our men are plowing, they can't be clearing the large amounts of, of snow away. So there would have to be employees that are available to do both in the next few days. And it, it doesn't sound like um, that's going to be the case in the next two or three days. Yeah, but, Mr. You'll, you'll talk to Mark, Mayor. I'll talk to Mark and he can, you know, uh, set it up with Roy to be done when it's appropriate, when Roy feels it's appropriate. Perfect. Yeah, what we do is we go in there with loaders and we load up the dump trucks and we haul it out. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Is everybody ready to move on to item seven, new business? Mm -hmm. Okay, 7A is the revised proposed uh, fiscal year budget. I would request that I come back to that because that could be a, uh, a long discussion or longer. Uh, item B, rectangle rapid flashing beacon project. The DOT has notified the town uh, that they are willing to consider if the town requests the installation of up to five locations for the rapid flashing beacons. Um, and we have to provide certain technical uh, information. We referred this request to the police commission for discussion and uh, recommendation. I provided 10 potential locations for them. They can select five and those are the five that will submit to uh, the DOT. The thing the council needs to know about is while the construction cost and the design would be covered by the Connecticut DOT, once the project is complete, they'll turn the uh, flashing beacons over to the town and the town is responsible for the maintenance and the upkeep, uh, which initially shouldn't be bad, but you know, it's like anything else going down the road. Um, there could be maintenance costs involved. Any questions about the flashing beacons? No. Okay, item C, Cochiola has requested a uh, bid waiver for the upcoming uh, paving season. They're extending their offer for the to hold the uh, 2018 unit prices bid. Um, there would be a, obviously uh, over $25,000. Uh, so that would enter the realm of uh, town council approval. Uh, we're anticipating it could be up to a million dollars for this particular item. It was um, competitively bid in 2018 and they've been holding the same prices ever since. Uh, they have preferred pricing from TILCON. Uh, so we're submitting this for uh, evaluation, potential recommendation to the town council for consideration. If you approve this, this would require a motion to refer to the town council. Through the chair, if I could. Sure. So I guess um, pavement also goes by fuel prices, is that correct? It goes by fuel prices, but the big, um, the big adjustment is the what they call the liquid cost, the liquid asphalt cost, the tar cost, um, and the tar cost right now uh, is uh, very favorable from where it was before. Uh, so, while fuel costs go into a little bit, um, is primarily the liquid asphalt cost, and that's the reason they're able to hold their cost. Um, and that also includes the labor. I've got no idea how they can hold the labor costs, but I would assume it's got something to do with uh, the preferred rates that they're getting through TOCON. So I guess my, my concern is, is that, you know, what were the rates in 2018 and what were they, um, you know, was the, the cost of fuel high back then or the cost of this um, asphalt high back then and now because the fuel prices are down lower, um, it's beneficial for them, Cochiola. Um, short answer, I believe, either way. short answer is I believe the answer is yes. They're not in business to lose money, that's for sure. So is it something that, that could, 
I know potentially putting it out to bid again, um, we could potentially pay more. Yes. But are we in that area now where, where you know, we could save money? I don't believe so. One of the other advantages Coach Yola's got over almost everybody else who would bid it is they're a Watertown firm. Ray, in the past, who, um, when this was open for bid in 2018, who were the other companies that bid on it? Do you remember? Yeah, the other companies that bid on it, uh, Tilcon Tommaso bid on it, ONG bid on it, B&W bid on it. Um, if you need the exact list, give me about 30 seconds, I can pull it up. Um, but those are, the usual, those are the usual suspects. Do you want the exact list? No, no, I, I don't need the exact list unless anybody else is looking for it. To the chair, um, I would just want to know uh, if any of those other are uh, local. Any other bidders? Let me pull up the exact list. I'll give you the uh, towns. No, Jeff, I don't think any of them are. I think ONG's closest uh, uh, facilities like in Torrington. The only reason I'm, I'm really looking into this is because I, I think Rob was heading the same direction is that if, it, if, if there is a way that uh, if prices have gone down and the cost has gone down to do this um, between now and 2018, um, then it might behoove us to look into a, uh, a new bid on this because why lock us into a higher price? Um, again, I'm not an expert in this area, but you know, just judging from the areas that I am, um, I know that there's a lot of difference between prices in 2018 and 2021, uh, particularly as a result of the pandemic. So that could force pricing down and anything we can save the taxpayer, I think is, should be something we do, um, provided of course we don't have a drop in quality of service. Agreed. Yeah, I agree. Okay, the last time we bid this out, there were three firms that bid it, B&W from Waterford, Connecticut, Cochiola Paving from Oakville, and Asphalt Repair Solutions from Botsford. Interesting. And what were the price differences, Roy? Uh, Cochiola for Class 1 Concrete, they bid... Uh, $88 per ton, B&W bid $97 per ton, asphalt repair bid $99.80 per ton. Uh, so it's about $10 per ton difference at that time between the second and the uh, first. That, that's a pretty significant difference. Um, and it's a local company. Yeah, it's a local company. The only thing I think though is that, I, I mean, I would imagine that if we did put it back out to bid, they would bid again. They might bid at the same price. It's theoretical they could bid at a higher price and we might put ourselves out. But I think the thing comes down to this, if it's worth going into, if it's only gonna save us, you know, a dollar or two and versus the risk of them, of it, because since I'm not an expert in this area, if it ends up being more per ton, um, then we just kind of shot ourselves in the foot. So, but the difference, ten dollars looks like around that. Um, that's pretty significant difference. It might be a hometown discount. So, yeah, well, I happen to know Coach Yo is pretty hungry right now. We do like to bid out this sort of thing in February and March because we like to get early in the books. Uh, we tend to get better prices earlier in the season before people uh, uh, commit all the resources. I have a quick question for Roy. So sure. Just noticing at the gas pump in the last couple of weeks, um, you know, I fill my car probably once a week and, and, you know, for several 
month, month and a half ago, it was 40 bucks and now it's 54. I mean, is that any indicator as to how Cochiola might bid this? If we no, no, that's an indicator of what state gas taxes are uh, occurring. What the Cochiola does is they lock in their long-term future contract with Tilcon, who's their supplier, and Tilcon locks in their price uh, with their suppliers, who are the actual refineries. So they're not nearly as volatile as um, because they're locked into the future market. So they're not nearly as volatile as what we see at the gas pumps. You know, the guys at the gas pump raise their price immediately because they have to pay immediately for uh, when they get their delivery. And that's kind of the economics. That's why the gas prices go up so quick and they come down so slow. Right, right. I mean, just in, in my opinion, I'm not sure this is worth putting out the bid. I don't know how everybody else feels about it, but I don't think you're gonna, I don't think you're gonna save any money. And through the chair, if I can. Roy, um, is this, um, is this your recommendation to, to us saying, um, do the bid waiver because of your experience? Yes. Okay, then um, are you looking for a motion? Yes. I'll make the motion that we choose um, Cochiola Paving's request for the bid waiver. No, uh, through the chair, the motion's got to be recommended to the town council for consideration. Bob, you want to reword that? To sure. So I move that we um, move this to the town council for the bid waiver for Cochiola Paving. We have second that. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Hey, 7D, mirror update. Thank you. Mirror update. I just want to make the subcommittee aware of the fact that the Mira plant in Hartford is going to be closing um, as of June 30th next year, 2022. Uh, so we're going to be scrambling for um, a source for getting rid of our garbage, get both generated at the transfer station. And on a much wider front, um, our private haulers are also going to be uh, scrambling to find a place. Mirror is telling us that they're going to convert the uh, trash energy plant into a, uh, a transfer station and they're going to be shipping it all out of state. At this point, they're making a the representation that we would see a significant cost increase, although they told us a few months ago that we were going to be seeing a $50 per ton increase. Uh, so I just want to make you aware that it's a very volatile situation. Uh, we don't know what's going to go on with it. Um, we don't know the price or the cost impact. Right now, the town has got most favorable nation status with them until 2027. Uh, so we get the best price that they can offer, uh, but we don't know what that price is going to be. Um, for instance, right now, uh, we don't pay for recyclables. There's no market for recyclables. We may wind up paying for it. Uh, we simply don't know at this point. Um, we do have a uh, an ordinance in place where all of the garbage in town has to go to Mira, so we don't have any real choice. We have a contract with them. Um, so I just wanted to bring up the issue in case uh, we get further news or we do have to take some action uh, to protect the town and the residents. Next item on the agenda is the 2020 MS4 annual stormwater report that was included in your packet. Uh, the stormwater program is an annual program uh, report generated for the Connecticut Department of Energy and Environmental Protection. By, uh, by the program requirements, we have to present this to the town council for re review and approval uh, to send it up to DEEP. Uh, in the past, the town council has said, let the Public Works Subcommittee deal with it. So that's why it's on your lap. Um, 
we do have to, we do, we did publish this today. It has to be uh, available to the public by February 15th. We have a 45 day comment period on about April 1st, the report is due up there. Uh, so uh, this is the report. We're not totally in compliance with the program uh, and we're not going to be. Uh, the, the program requirements are pretty onerous. There's no way we're gonna be cleaning out a quarter of our catch basins um, or up to half catch basins every year. There's no way we're gonna be sweeping the streets three times a year, uh, but we're doing the best we can. Um, those are the highlights of the report. Um, so uh, this, again, this is more informational so we can check off the box saying, we've notified the public, we've notified the uh, uh, town council about it. And, um, you know, we're endeavoring to meet the uh, program requirements as best we can. To the best of my knowledge, they've never inspected it. They've never uh, sent us a letter, a notice of violation about it. Um, we just send up the report, we send up a check. Through the chair, may I ask a question? Go ahead. So Roy, how come um, we cannot be in compliance with it? Is it a budget issue? Yeah, uh, we have the new VAC tour and that's an effort to bring ourselves more into compliance, uh, but they physically want uh, anywhere between 1,000 and 2,000 catch basins cleaned every year. Uh, that's difficult to do given our uh, constraints. Uh, that would require a two to three man crew assigned to it essentially uh, almost the entire construction season. Um, they are requiring us to go out there and do dry water sampling on outfalls and wet water sampling. And we don't have the engineering staff to do that, nor do we have a lot of money to pay a consultant to do that. Uh, they're requiring us to modify our planning and zoning regulations. We haven't done that yet. Uh, they're requiring us to uh, have uh, private property owners disconnect impervious areas from uh, the stormwater catchment system. At this point, the town attorney says we don't have the authority um, by ordinance to uh, be allowed to do that. Uh, and these are just uh, a few of the particulars. Um, so like most towns, we're doing the best we can and we are making progress. You know, one of the big things we were able to tell the DEP that we did go out and buy the new VAC door. We are gonna be able to do uh, more in that effort. Um, but at this point, you know, we simply, uh, like most other towns, I think the compliance for this particular program on a statewide basis for municipalities is, is less than 25%. That was my question. <clears throat> I was going to ask that question, Roy. As you can tell, I'm not a real fan of this. Yeah. I think the word unfunded mandate comes to mind. Do we need to? Um... No, again, this is more for informational purposes. This is so we can check off the box. Um, and I can raise my right hand and I'll promise to do better next year. Go ahead, raise your right hand. <laughs> <laughs> Through the chair. Yes, sir. It being, this is informational, it being the requirement is mandated from DEEP and reviewing it just now and going over it quickly as I could, it falls upon Roy and the highway superintendent to make sure it's complied with. It's something that we accepted it as informational and I'm sure it'll be taken care of. It's my take on it. <laughs> so advised. Okay, go, thank you. Going back to the new business, the revised budget. Um, I sent you the revised sheets. We did have the second budget review with the town uh, manager and the finance director. Um, as you know, the first time around, I was very aggressive and very ambitious of what I asked for. Um, the second time around, uh, reality uh, struck very hard. Uh, so what uh, the final result of that particular review uh, you have in front of you, 
Uh, most of the capital program is gone. Most of the paving is gone out of the general fund. Uh, some of the pieces of equipment are gone. Um, we did uh, discuss at length the implications of it. Uh, what we're proposing to do is most of our paving is going to be through the bonding program. Um, and that was the attachment that I emailed out later, what streets we can and cannot do. Um, to give you, for instance, we had um, Parkman Street was a separate project uh, that was cut from the budget there. We're proposing to do that through the bond project. Edgewood Avenue, we need $200,000. Uh, we have $114,000 proposed this year. Uh, so what we'll do is uh, we'll package that up with the, uh, the budget next year and over a two year period, uh, we'll have the money to complete all of that. The Echo Lake Road, Culvert repair, uh, that's the one that was, uh, we've had a couple collapses on and we had the barrels for quite some time on while we try to figure out what's going on. And that's a $200,000 repair according to the contractor. Uh, we had to eliminate that for budgetary purposes. Um, these are the type of things that traditionally we've had to package and put in a um, some sort of a bond package every year. Uh, so probably, um, you know, if the projects hang out long enough in the, uh, in the list, uh, they'll probably wind up in a bond package someday. Uh, we eliminated one of the big highway trucks and we have a, uh, a medium highway truck. Uh, we do have a, a forklift still in there. Uh, so that's pretty much the, uh, uh, the bad news. Even, even with all of the cuts that were uh, proposed by the town manager and the finance director. Uh, the uh, requested budget increase for the highway department, uh, which is going to be going to, forward to the council consideration, if you guys approve, is still almost 10%. And that's really unheard of. Um, we haven't been able to do that in the past before. And that's something that, you know, the town council is going to have to wrestle with. Um, if there's any particular project or cuts that uh, we're recommended at this point. Uh, that's something that you, uh, being members of the town council, have the ability uh, to put back in should you so choose. Uh, but this is uh, probably the best package that um, uh, we can recommend at this point. A couple of the drivers are, uh, we have a statutory, well, contractually, uh, the union members are getting a raise this year. And the um, the light, the payment cycle for the budget uh, personnel costs is that this year there's 53 pay week pay periods in the uh, the fiscal year. Ordinarily there's 50, 52, so that in and of itself increased the budget by uh, about one and a half percent. Um, just the uh, uh, the highway uh, and the uh, blue collar uh, budget increases. So. Um, <clears throat> That's the overview. So through the chair, can I have a question? Sure. So Roy, on my first <coughs> meeting that I attended of this committee, um, you described a real concern about uh, Edgewood Road and it possibly failing and sliding down. And so am I guessing here that that we're pushing Edgewood Road out to 2022? Is that what I'm hearing? Probably. Uh, what I'm proposing to do this year, uh, unless uh, you know, we add another $100,000 or swap another hundred grand back in, is that we do the design this year or this coming fiscal year. Um, and we, whatever money's left over, uh, we have, um, we roll that over the next year and then uh, phase it in over the project in over two years. This is pretty common. This is what we're doing for Middlebury Road. This is what we do for some of the others. Um, the consultants, we've had three look at it. Uh, they've all told us that this is not um, a must do today thing, uh, but this is a, you know something we should be get to rather quickly. Uh, having said that, there's no guarantee that there won't be a failure, but I can also I can't also say um, that 10 years from now we can't be having the same discussion uh, because we simply don't know what's going to happen with the soil. 
One of the other things that we did have a conversation with the town manager about was the possibility of create uh, of changing Edgewood Avenue to a one-way street down, uh, which would lessen the traffic on it. What we'd be able to do is shift the traffic away from that edge of the road, maybe like uh, like the load, and help it out that way. Um, but that's something that the uh, town manager said will be taken up with the police commission. So yeah, is there a risk? Yes. Through the chair, uh, Roy, real quick, uh, on that with those engineers, did they give any idea of what time frame we're looking at? Um, and you mentioned that, uh, you know, it's not something that has to be done immediately. But the question I'm concerned with is something that, you know, has a sort of a point where we have to do it by, you know, like, you know, how long do we have until there is a real issue, a real issue there? They, they don't know. Okay, so um, they, they gave me a they gave me a time frame of tomorrow to ten years that they simply don't know because what we're, what we're speculating about is a sheer failure on the ground, uh, which is a slippage. Uh, what we're trying to do is prevent the slippage by eliminating water infiltration the best we can. We sealed up the pavement. Uh, we're going to be taking the trees down on the bank, which will eliminate part of that load. Um, and if we redirect some of the traffic away, again, that could re reduce some of the load and the vibration. Uh, but no, that's a question, and none of them are willing to hang their hat on a particular time frame. Uh, they'll tell you soon. They'll tell you should. Um, that's about all they'll tell you. If something were to happen, um, beyond, of course, the obvious consequences of that, um, from a liability standpoint, would the town be liable uh, legally speaking, I know you're not an attorney on this, but could it be held liable for a failure uh, and whatever damages and consequences as a result of said failure, since we are aware of a problem? We're aware of a problem. Our legal defense would be we're addressing it. Um, if something were to happen, absolutely, we get sued. That's just the way it is right now. Mm -hmm. You know, a lawyer will sue you for anybody, okay. anytime, and yeah. that's just the way it is. Um, they'll throw liability at you. Well, you're going to hear it over and over again. Your your liability, this liability. I mean that that's supposed to end all discussion right there. Right. Um, in my experience. So. Well, one, I mean, of, one of the things I could tell you is having handled insurance claims and still doing it, they go back and look at minutes in the town, and if they see that you've discussed it and are aware of it, it makes a claim more valuable. Yeah, it does. You know, certainly we have a knowledge of it. So that's why you have to be careful everything you say on the record. And that's why you got to be very careful about the meeting minutes you write. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I can't give any uh, guarantee. I, all I can tell you is uh, the last time I took a look at it, um, which was a couple of weeks ago, I hadn't seen any change from the first time I took a look at it earlier in the year. Uh, but if something like that happens, more likely it would be catastrophic. It's just going to slip. Uh, but it could be tomorrow, could be 10 years. You know, we just do the best we can. I have a question for you, Roy. Sir. Is it, in your opinion, do you think um, making that a one way, would it be from Main Street up or would it be from Cherry Ave down? It would be Cherry Ave down. And the reason I say that is because uh, the fire department tells me they can't get their trucks up that road anyway. From Main Street. Right. Right. Through the chair. Ken, through the chair. Herm, I, maybe sure, Herm. Has, I know the. I know at one point there was discussion of making this a one-way street, and it, yes, I don't know why street. it never went anywhere. I'm thinking like you and everybody else listening to this, one way up would be obviously feasible if it wasn't for the fire apparatus. And it was the fire apparatus, but making it one way down in an easterly direction is going to interrupt the traffic flow on the main street because traffic going eastbound downhill either going to make a left onto the main street or right onto the main street. They're going to be crossing lanes. It's going to be just like 
when it was going to be one way deep all, but it wasn't made to be onto French. It's going to interrupt the traffic flow. And yes, the answer was Roy, the fire apparatus was going to have problems going down. Yeah, one of the benefits of making a one way down is um, right now, as you're coming down Cherry Avenue on the main street, you're not supposed to be making a left there. Um, supposedly, uh, you're supposed to be coming on Cherry and making a right and not heading northbound on uh, 63. So my thought was, if we sent the people going northbound on 63 down Edgewood, they could make the left out. Again, they're crossing traffic. Yes. Uh, but it does give them, that's a little bit different than the last time we evaluated it because it was uh, no left turn prohibition on Cherry Avenue at that time due to Starbuck. Uh, so one of the uh, things that the police commissions are certainly going to have to talk about uh, is the implications of no left bound out of Cherry and making uh, uh, the uh, people who had no north coming down that direction, um, going down Edgewood. <coughs> So also, has this also, traffic changed at all since uh, the Cherry Avenue um, going left? Has it increased the traffic going down Edgewood Avenue? Do we know that for people who might want to turn left? I I don't know it. We've not. We don't do. We don't have any traffic counts, and we don't have any turning movements there. Um, you know, I can tell you that. Um, They've done some signal modifications at Falls, not Falls, French Street and uh, Starbucks there. I think it's a little bit better than it was, uh, but you still have significant traffic backups uh, coming up 63 in, in that direction. Um, would this help? It could. So I guess uh, you know, the, the bottom line is that um, I feel reasonably comfortable about phasing in Edgewood over a couple of years, getting the design done, getting everything lined up, um, and then completing it next year. Uh, you know, we're rolling the dice, but to me, it seems like a reasonable risk. I, I tend to agree. Mm -hmm. Are there any other questions? Uh, and again, um, this is not the final word on the budget. You know, the town council is going to take a look at it, and there will be a presentation by the public, uh, by public works, to the town council. Um, and again, you're going to have another shot at it and think about it and discuss it with the other compatriots. You know, to decide, um, you know, what we want to do about it. Uh, but at this point, this is my best guess and recommendation, um, endorsed by the town manager and the finance director to the best of my knowledge. So, uh, but you guys do have the authority uh, to make any changes or recommendations that you feel is appropriate. Through the chair. Sure, Rachel. Roy, so are you saying essentially we're just going to be continuing with what we're doing this year with this current budget? Like there's essentially nothing really added with the, with the truck and some of these other things. Are, are there things that you can point to in this budget that um, will be different uh, in the next fiscal year than what we're currently doing? Uh, it's pretty much a status quo budget. There's not a lot of uh, new stuff going on. The, the real heavy lifting on the uh, uh, cap, the uh, physical infrastructure improvements are gonna occur through the uh, public works bond. Uh, that'll be a very active year for this year. Uh, we're gonna continuing the roadway safety audit money, uh, which will be a little bit of um, modification, maybe the Depot Street, maybe the Hemingway Park Road, uh, trying to address the merchant concerns for uh, traffic. Um, and we're going to continue working with a consultant about what we can do for uh, Main Street up in that area. Uh, that's the only real progress I can see on that. The rest of it is 
uh, maintenance activities. Through the chair. Yeah, Herb. I was able to see the most recent email that went out that I saw within the past, well, since the onset of the meeting, I think Roy did very well regarding some preventive maintenance, certain areas of town, not major road reconstruction, but an area, on the, let's say the Southeast side of Oakville, uh, probably the main artery there is Parkman along with Sylvan Lake Road. There's gonna be work done to improve the arteries going in and out of those streets. And I think uh, he did what he could and look at what he could do and I'm anticipating some progress in other areas on bonding. Thank you, Roy. You're welcome. Thank you. But yeah, that's most of it's coming through the bond, and that was you know really the intent of uh, town council promoting that bond is um, that was the vehicle or mechanism we were going to try to get it. And you know we are getting some things done. And we are continuing to look for grants, uh, transportation alternatives, steep grant is coming in, uh, uh, lots of, uh, we've got two more uh, major roadway projects uh, on deck under lots of. Um, so, you know, we are making progress. Is it frustrating? Could we make more? We are, we would like to, but, um, you know, the fiscal reality is what it is. True. Thank you. Any other discussion, guys and girls? I have a question. Roy, after the next storm or two, what's our uh, snow removal budget going to look like? How bad are we hit? Uh, let me see. Somewhere in the packet there should be. Well, the beautiful thing is the, the weekend storm was on Sunday, which is all double time for the guys. Right. Sand and salt, I don't think we're going to be bad at all. Overtime, um, it's been a fairly mellow year. Again, if you give me a second, I'll print. Maybe, maybe the data's in there. I don't get the packet, so I don't know what info you sent out already. Yeah, usually I send out the numbers where we're at. Okay, as of today, approximately 26% of the overtime budget's been expended. Uh, so we're in pretty good shape there. And ba -ba -ba, sand and salt. Sand and salt, we've expended um, approximately 20% of the budget. All right, so we're in good shape then. Okay. Thank you. Right now we're in good shape. As you as you know, looking outside, the storms are coming every two to three days now. So uh, the next month will be interesting. But as of right now, uh, we're not in bad shape. You know, nice thing about storms like we had over the weekend, they don't use a lot of material. You're mm -hmm. plowing and you're not putting stuff down. It's last year when we had all that ice and we just kept hitting it, hitting it, hitting it. Uh, that's when we ran into trouble. Uh, so as of today, uh, we're not in bad shape. Okay, thank you.
Just a quick question, Roy. So sure. is, there, is there another, so this budget that's in front of us, this represents a 10% increase, is that what I heard earlier? 10% in the highway division, yes. Highway division, correct. Yes. And is there a, is there another, um, obviously you'll be getting together with the town manager and finance department prior to the next meeting? No. No. No, this, this is the numbers um, that the finance, she submits what she wants. Um, but I was told um, Thursday uh, that this is pretty much what the town manager is gonna be recommending for consideration to the town council. So at this point, um, you know, you guys will be taking a look at the whole package, the big package town wide uh, with the uh, budget hearings uh, in deciding where you want to go. Okay. You know, at that point, you'll be able to take a look what's happening with the grand list, what's happening with the tax collections. You know, obviously that's uh, not part of the purview of public work. So, you know, you guys got to take a look at the whole big package. Understood. Thank you. I'm leaving. Good night, folks. Hi, Mary. Good night, Mayor. Thank you. Any other questions, guys? And again, let me throw out there two things. One, um, you know, we are always available, we being myself, the finance director, you know, if you have any concerns about any specific uh, uh, budgetary items, you know, feel free to um, either come in or give us a call or a video or whatever, you know, I'll be happy to explain it uh, either before, during, or after the town council budget presentation. And um, you are invited to take a ride in the snowplow either during a, a, a nighttime or during a daytime activity. It can be kind of interesting uh, to see exactly what uh, they're going through up there or what's happening up the highway garage during the operations. Uh, you'll see what the, uh, um, the constraints are um, because that is, uh, you know, it's a big part of what we do is public safety. And um, if you want to do it, the invitation's out there. Roy, I, I really actually want to do that. What, what's the, well, how do I do it? Is there a, should I call somebody? Yep. Call Bob Grand, call myself or Bob Grand Prix at 5244. And if we can safely put you in a truck, you know, be happy to. Okay. You know, there's country trucks and then there's Oakville trucks. And there are two different experiences. Oh, I bet. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> All right. I'm going to take you up on it. Yep. You're, you're One last there. question, Roy. Sir. When it, when it comes to bonds, because I know very little about it, how long is the a short description of how long does it take to put a bond together and get approved? Um, it takes months. What you do is you put together a project list, you put together your expenditures, uh, the bond itself, every bond costs somewhere between 60 and 100 grand for legal fees. Um, so you have a bond attorney put it together and then it gets passed in the form of an ordinance. So there has to be a public hearing and it has to go to referendum. Um, so it all takes months. Uh, the other problem, not problem, the other challenge is the bonding agencies, they give you a rating based on your credit history and what your debt load is and that sort of thing. And typically they tell you, you have a, uh, an upside of what the capacity of how much you can have in bonds in any given year. You know, say, uh, say it's $20 million. Um, they'll let you have $20 million out on the street and they won't let you go any further until you paid off some of the other ones, you know, like the old schools or whatever. Um, so that's part of the timing that goes on. You know, the nice thing is if you keep the debt balance in a nice steady item, um, then the taxpayers don't see a, a big increase in any given year. Um, and the other beautiful thing is if you've been following the, uh, the market rates, uh, 
the bonds are like at historically low re uh, rates right now. So money is pretty cheap to borrow. Um, when you put together a bond package, what you really want, don't want to be doing is buying pencils and computers. Uh, what you want to do is you want to buy something that's going to last at least 15 or 20 years or whatever life of the bond is. So that's one of the other things that the bond council takes a look at. Um, but yeah, it's reasonable to say uh, you can get one punch without, you know, within six months. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mm. What else? Um, I don't have anything else, Mr. Chair. All right. Motion to adjourn. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And go Huskies, Roy. Okay. Uh, well, go Huskies, and I've got orders to eat Carvel on the way home because it's my wife's birthday. So thank oh, you. Right. Oh,